this episode, we'll be introducing our Foam Flight Tabletop Airplane Stands. These stands are available from 20 all the way up to 30cc size aircraft in two different convenient sizes. These stands feature metal hardware and plywood interlocking parts. This airplane stand is posable in any direction imaginable, so if there's an angle you need to hold your airplane, this stand will do it. You can find yours today at www.foam-flight.com. That's www.foam-flight.com. Hey guys, how's it going? It is Monday evening about 5.30ish, somewhere in there. First day back to work from a four-day weekend, and it was a tough one. It just, whew, I'm beat. Um, but here we are. We're back to our uh, four-star 40 build. We're picking up where we left off on our fuselage. We just recently put the tank floor in. And I went on ahead and installed the tank uh, before what the instructions tell us to because the tanks that we're going to put in there won't fit through the bulkhead like what they're wanting us to do. We want to slide it in there. Um, not going to happen just yet. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put our tank in. And uh, we got to make sure we leave clearance for our throttle cable and stuff. So that's one thing that we'll be checking so we'll go ahead and put all this stuff there remember we're just trial fitting we're not putting nothing in for good just yet so let's uh move along and get this puppy done okay what you're looking at here is my tank i have just sitting in there um it's not rubbered in or anything yet but what i did was i moved my fuel line holes from the middle of the firewall to the top for a couple reasons. I wanted to try to get these two lines closer together um, for fuel flow purposes. It just makes things happen easier. It's not having to come uphill to feed the engine. And it was also, the way everything was setting, it was putting a kink in my line to have to go down here. So I just moved everything up. Everything will work better though now. But before we foam this in, I've got to go see if I can find a drill bit long enough to put our throttle cable tube in place thought I had it setting up here but it's similar to this now this is for my elevator it'll actually be going through the firewall right in this area and going back to our servo bay so I got to go find a drill bit and um, the tube that that will slide through here it is <coughs> Sorry about that, but here is the, the plastic tube, and there's the cable. It's an actual cable. It makes it a little flexible. But you have a tube there to kind of keep it from binding, and we'll put a little bit of oil in that to keep it from uh, seizing up on you. You definitely don't want that. So let me go find some tools, and I'll be right back. All right. Good evening, folks. Here we are. We are getting ready to actually install all the foam around our fuel tank. But before we do that, we need to install our throttle control rod, or at least the outer side of it. We're going to use a SIG laser rod. There. We're going to use the SIG laser rod. And what it is, it's a two-piece system. You have an outer control rod, and you have an inner control rod. And what we're going to do, we're actually just going to install this piece. Because that's the part you have to drill your hole with. And these things actually work pretty slick. They're flexible and still work. And if you, I mean, you can almost really run them 90 degrees and they'll still work. I had a flow plane. I used a, uh, I used one of these to control the rudder with that. This part connected onto the uh, control horn on the rudder itself. And then this went back to the rudder on the, the float itself. And it's, they used it to steer like that. So what we need to do is drill a hole in the firewall to install, to install our outer control rod. Now, if you notice, let's see here, we got a little ways to go. We got to go from the outside of the cheek all the way back here. Now, your normal drill bit isn't quite going to be long enough to accommodate the drill, the, the drill itself, the drill bit, 
and everything to go. So what I've got is a Rocky Mountain Twist brand made right here in Montana, uh, six inch aircraft extension drill. It's a 3 16 drill, it's just a little longer. And what that'll do, that'll allow me to get back in here with my hand drill and drill the necessary hole um, for our control rod. I may need to wallow it out a little bit because the, the sleeve itself is a little bit bigger than a 3 16. But we'll see. So let me change my drill bit here. I'm gonna set that up for maximum extension. Running true. Okay, and then we marked our hole last time. Very carefully we'll drill our hole. And we gotta go through the firewall and the triangle. Look at that. Cut this hot button. And I'm gonna wall that out a little bit. So everything will fit. Or hopefully. If not, we can always take it out. You can't always put it back. Or you could just epoxy the crap out of it until it stays. We'll do a little check here. It's probably gonna be not big enough. No biggie. So we can go to the back side. I'll tell you what, this drill has lasted a while. I'm running a D-Volt 20 volt max with lithium uh, battery. I haven't charged it all summer and I've been building airplanes with it. So yeah, I'm impressed. So we'll try it from the backside here. Trial and error. Just try to make it, make it go, that ain't no thing. Dang, not quite yet. Okay, no biggie, a little bit more. What I'm doing, I'm using the flutes of the drill bit. Kind of act like an animal. Make that hole just a little bit bigger. Oh, we're so close, but so far away. CA to kind of hold it and then hit it with some epoxy, we'll rough it up. Oh, there we go. We'll just kind of push it through. I'm using my finger to kind of guide it down. What I want to do, I want to pull it back to this point right here. Now I'm going to go ahead, before I get it yanked all the way back there, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. If I didn't run off, the sun didn't run off with it. It's all right. We got some more of this fine, high quality 3M product right here. So we're just gonna rough up the end there a little bit so it'll hold glue. I like that, don't have to get crazy with it. So we'll go ahead and slide this back. And the reason we're doing this, if we pack this full of foam, we wouldn't be able to get in here and work. 
This is the only thing being a tail dragger. This is the only control rod coming up front. We got lots of excess back here, so I know we're fine there. I'll pull it back to uh, right about there. Just I just want a little bit. You know what? We use our motor mount right here as like a guide. So if you see, I brought it out flush with the rail of the motor mount, just to kind of make it look nice and even. So at this point, I'll get a cooperate with me here. This is all new equipment for me. I'm still learning how to use it. So at that point right there, I'm gonna put just a little CA to hold it. We'll come back later in the build and we will actually epoxy all that. Get my glue opened up here. It's been a long day, folks, so excuse me for being a little sluggish. I'm just a little tired. My day starts at about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Actually about 3, honestly, because I'll roll over and see it's 3 o'clock and I'll say, ah, go ahead and get up and drink coffee and if there's anything that needs to be uploaded, work on that or edit these videos. You know, there's some things I cut out. I don't know if you're old school like me about pictures and stuff, but I like pictures I can hang on to, you know. All right, we're just gonna put a little dab of CA right there. Metal, that's more than enough. But uh, there's this uh, app you can get for your Android device called Free Prints, and it is really awesome. It really is free. They allow you up to 85 physical pictures you can hold, you know, like you went to the photo hut back in the day and you had to wait a couple weeks and then you finally got your pictures back if they didn't get them mixed up with anything else. Show you something, the other side of the wall that you never see. Probably seen some of these on Facebook, but my students, my family, my wife, my daughter, my son, all them guys. Some airplanes that I'm proud of. My boy when he was flying trikes. Old Jason Newberg at Wings for Wishes. Man, I'll tell you what, it was a load of fun. But that's, uh, I keep that there, uh-oh. I keep that there as a reminder. It should be popping back into focus. But I keep that there as a reminder for uh, all the things I love, all the things I like. Okay, now it's time to uh, do some uh, insulating. Or, well, cushioning. Get a sip of my coffee there. Well, uh, let's see here. First things first, I'm gonna pick the tank up. I want a little bit of foam in the front here. Like that. I'm gonna put a little underneath it. Like that. Now see, I've already cut these pieces out. It kind of pre-measured. I just got to make sure I get them back in the right spot. All right, about like that. And then we'll set this down there. And what I want to do is kind of fold this foam over and tuck it in the front there. I got a couple extra pieces here from where I cut. We'll just poke in there as well. Push it where it needs to go. Then, okay, I'm gonna put that in like so. Control rod 
wasn't in there to begin with. <laughs> okay, so we're a little tight up front here, which is fine. Right about there is where it gets tight. Remember, this is that precision measuring here. Beat it to fit, paint to match. So we'll piece that in there. Nobody's ever going to see this again once we seal it up. stuffing the foam in there to kind of help tighten up the tank. That's where you got to be careful. I tried to work ahead a little bit and pre-measure some things, which it all worked out fine, but I did not have that control rod in there. You can see now my pieces that I pre-cut don't work anymore, but that's okay. Problem solving. We'll work around it. friendly music running in the background there. Okay, and then we'll step off to the side and look and make sure we're not coming up past our cowl there, or where our top piece is going to lay over. We have been rubberized. And if you want, you can go ahead and grab your deck lid there. Kind of hold it. See how I make sure everything's fitting the way it's supposed to. Now this is going to be a curved piece, so there's a trick to that I want to show you when it comes time to put that in. Okay, here we are. We're going to cap this sucker. Now what we do, we have our instrument panel glued in place here. That's going to be serve as your backside former. Make sure the CA is dry so we don't accidentally stick to it. This is our pre-cut balsa piece that caps over this. Now I've trimmed one side to leave clearance for the uh, needle valve and all that good stuff. And you know, I've, I've put this piece up here, you've probably seen me cover the camera up with this thing several times just to kind of fit and make sure our tank and everything was gonna hold. Well, see, there's a problem that we have. It's a rounded top, but our wood's flat. I'm gonna show you how to get over that. Now, fortunately, this piece of wood is limber enough. It's gonna, it's gonna work with me, I think. We'll see how well it holds. If it doesn't, get you a squirt bottle and put some water in it, or you can actually use uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I mean, not the, not the good stuff you drink, or jar, as my buddy Crash calls it. Um, and you just mist your wood with it. And what that does, that makes it really pliable. Um, we got some kits that we're gonna build later on that uh, will actually do some uh, forming. And we'll use, I'll show you that technique. Now this looks really good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get like three or four pieces of tape and I'm gonna go all the way across. Make sure we have plenty. Now don't worry about the overhang. We'll take care of that a little later. But I'll put a piece of tape right back here. Okay, about like that. We get another piece of tape. You can put it right about here not really on top of the former because remember we had those tabs poking out of the side of the fuselage I'm gonna put another piece right up here we don't want to hit those tabs with our tape because that just makes things a little more difficult this tape is going to temporarily hold things in place for us and we want to make sure we don't glue the tape okay because it won't come off I mean it will it's just gonna cause a lot of extra work that's not needed okay I got our we're matched up up front here. Okay, we can see where our slot, where this is gonna sit. Okay, and you just I just kinda use my fingers and feel it center. Okay, and I'm gonna just kinda form that over and use that tape. And working my way back, so I'm just kinda holding that down. I'm holding down here as well, making sure we're lined up. Just kind of drag it over a little bit. No biggie. And we're going to roll that table too. 
Remember, this is just a temporarily hold it. We're not going to fly it like this. Well, I think I have had a few airplanes with I've flown with a lot of tape on them, duct tape. Fix a lot of things with that stuff. Okay, that's not bad. And like I say, if we're, we're poking off on the sides here, that's fine. Just a few swipes of the sanding block and that'll be fixed. Okay, that don't look too bad. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it back here in the back. I'm going to come up here to the front and I'm going to glue the front. Okay, this midsection we can work along, but we got to glue it I'm, <laughs> from the inside, you know is where we're really going to do the glue work. So we're going to come back here. A little bit of CA. Make sure you get enough in there to hold it. Because nothing will piss you off worse than a glue joint coming loose. Especially when you're trying to fly the darn thing. And what we'll do, we'll come back and we'll glue around the instrument panel as well. good. Now we're going to come back up front. I'm going to use my hand and just kind of help hold that down. A little glue there, give it a second to dry. Bring, you know, tack up. And then I'll come up over here and glue this front side. Now, we're going to flip our model over next, okay, because whether we glue on the inside or outside, we have to come up from the bottom. So we'll just flip that over right quick. It's actually looking really, really good. It's amazing what a little bit of sheeting can do for an airplane. guys in here where you can see. Kind of. Y'all tell me when. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, now we can see the inside of our airplane, that nice rounded balsa. I'm going to take my hand and apply a little bit of pressure and I'm going to put some glue right along there. Okay, that'll hold that back side. What we're doing, we're strengthening it up so we can take our tape off and get in there and glue it really good. Okay, that ought to be still kind of squishy. I'm gonna hold it in there long enough to uh, make it happen so the glue can do its job. <coughs> you can feel it heating up. This fast CA, when it cures, you can feel it heat up, just that, that catalyst reaction. It's kind of neat. It's science is what it is. All right. Let me go ahead and get up here by the bulkhead. All right, I'm going to spin it around a little bit. If I can get down on this edge. There you go. Just like that. Ryan says he's sorry he couldn't be here tonight, guys. He is showing a lamb in 4-H this coming year. And uh, he has to go to their class tonight before all that stuff starts. So I'm left to my own airplane madness in here tonight. All right, while I got it upside down, let's see if I can position this without knocking everything over. This is our, this curved piece, that's our instrument panel that we just glued in. I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue. Actually, I'll put a drop and let it run down the crack. And the thin stuff will definitely do that really, really well. Right there. Okay. Now, we should be able to take our tape off. I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to take a coffee break right quick. I'm going to come back and we'll... Uh, peel our tape off and we'll glue these seams right quick. Okay, remember that overhang I was telling you about? That'll sand off. 
and we're almost to that point to where we can uh, do the sanding on our fuselage. After we get this piece situated, we'll install our landing gear block. Okay, it's time to install our landing gear block. That's this piece right here that we pre-built. Um, I'm gonna give you a second there and let you study that picture and tell me what's wrong with it. Well, I know you can't tell me what's wrong with it, but there is something wrong with this picture. And as if you were paying attention, when we uh, built all of our sub-assemblies, I told you what was really important about using blind nuts. And if you guessed, it's in there upside down, you guessed correctly. Now, the blind nuts aren't installed upside down. The entire landing block is. It'll go like that. Okay, well, we're gonna epoxy this bad boy in instead of glue. Okay. We got that. We got that radius top now. It makes it kind of rocky. So we'll mix up some epoxy right quick. I bet you anything or cold. Yep. So let me heat this up and get some mixed up, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I got my epoxy all did up now. All right, we're gonna coat this whole thing. I'm gonna blow away any sawdust in there. I'm gonna run just a little bit of epoxy right in here and right in here. Go along the bottom side of our former there. And another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna coat this entire piece. That way it helps glue those blind nuts in. So get the brush loaded up. Just like that. Now I'm being careful, the reason I'm holding this at an angle is so that we don't get no epoxy down in our threads. That'll kind of ruin your day. You have to go to the hardware store and get a tap or make a tap out of a screw and you can do that really easy. Just get your die grinder or your Dremel tool there and just uh, Take some veins in it or some flutes. Okay. Get that set in there. Um. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just like that. And then we'll let that tack up. There we go. And then we need to put our bottom in. Matter of fact, we can probably go ahead and do that. I don't think it'll hurt anything. And that's this piece right here with the hole in it. They actually, when they originally designed this kit, this is an oil drain hole. Um, because the way the airplane's shaped, all the nitro and stuff and goodies will wind up back in this area. So that's actually there to let some oil drain out. It is light plywood, but the radius on this is just enough where it don't really have to bend real far. So we don't really have to do any kind of taping or soaking or anything like that. Now what I'll do, we'll butt that up against our block, then we'll get our CA. After I find what I did with it, there it is. Now this is still wet, so we don't want to get too carried away with slamming it up in there. So I'll put some glue here. Try not to get your fingers like I just did. Put a little bit there. Run a little along that edge as well. Give that a second to do its thing. And then what we'll do, we'll pull it down up here at the front and then we'll glue it. Just kind of do a tack check right there. Get those Bible. All right. Now we'll pull it down, see how, how easy that bends, it just rolls around there. Make sure everything fits. We'll get this corner, I'll start up high, kind of let the glue run down. Gives it a chance to hold that way. Just like so. I'll tell you what, this uh, 
stand is definitely worth its weight in gold. I mean, I've had those Robart foam stands. Glue melts them. Fuel melts them. Um, I've got a plastic one over here I still got around. And uh, it's not bad. It's just not posable. It's not very helpful when uh, this grip CA on my instruction book. That is not good. We'll soak through the papers. You lose stuff together. Then you'll get a joke jokes about uh, hey, why is that uh, when pages stuck together? <laughs> In one corner it's kind of being difficult. Just continue to hold it there. Eventually she'll grab hold. Sometimes you run across parts like that. It just does not want to hold. Just not wanting to hold. That's where this stuff comes in handy. Uh, accelerator, it's in a hydrogen peroxide bottle. You gotta have four hands to do this. So we'll put a little bit more glue. Get in there, hold that sucker down. And squirt it with that accelerator. You might wind up gluing yourself to it, but uh, at least your part will be in place. Just like that. If it didn't, you was going to hear a string of bad words. And it has happened before. Alright, now we'll just kind of glue all that in place. probably wonder, well, why don't you use that kicker on that too, or that accelerator on that too? Because I want to give the glue a chance to at least seep into the wood. <clears throat> well, guys, this uh, does it up to this point. We are actually to the point to where we can start sanding on our fuselage. And I'm going to show you what we'll do. We want to sand everything smooth, of course, you know, get rid of all our glue boogers and all that good stuff. But there is one particular part on the fuselage that we really got to pay attention to. And that's these little tabs from where we glued everything together. And what we'll do, we'll run over everything and make sure it's still glued together, make sure we got all our joints glued. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my Dremel tool and come back and grind all these down because these are light fly and they are kind of hard to sand on. So I'll take them, grind them down, get them close, and then I'll come back with some uh, with the sanding pad and smooth everything out make it real nice. So uh, I'm going to leave that like that overnight. Let that epoxy and that landing block uh, cure. And then uh, we'll come back and uh, do some sanding. Um, next, I think what we're gonna do is do our wing bolts. Get all that rigged up and good to go. Oh. Hey folks, all right, up until this point, we have built our fuselage up to where we're ready to mount the wing. Now this is a very important part that we get it right because the wing has to mount properly to the fuselage. If it does not, the airplane won't fly right. So, um, we're going to take a few steps to uh, mark the center. Not, I'm not trying to scare you. It's just, let's be sure of our steps. Let's make sure that we do this right, center to center, and all that good stuff. But I'm going to show you a way to mount your wing um, using the parts that we have available um, with the kit. And uh, how to mark everything center. After we do this and get everything glued into place, we're, um, we're essentially done with the fuselage part. Uh, we'll go through and make sure everything is glued up nice and good. Uh, then we'll start sanding everything. So, uh, what do you say we reset the camera and get started? Okay, first thing we want to do, we're looking inside our fuselage. Remember our F2, or our F1, or excuse me, F2 former with our quarter inch hole in it? Okay, I drilled that undersize so I could step up on it and make our dowel fit. Now this is our dowel that came with the kit, okay, see how it's square, it's two inches long, quarter inch diameter. And the first thing we need to do is sharpen our dowel. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out in the shop and use my bench grinder and pretend this is my grind wheel. I'm going to hold it up there to angle and I'm just going to rotate this and grind it to a point. 
whatever we need to do, we need to keep the point when we get done symmetrical to our dowel. In other words, it needs to be dead center because that's what we're going to use to mark our wing on where we need to drill the hole. After we drill the hole, we're going to mount this in the wing and it's going to poke out like so. And then our wing will slide into the saddle, line up with our dowel hole, and lock it into place. And then we'll bolt it in at the back with our box we're going to load here in a little bit. Okay, so let me go sharpen this and I'll be right back. Okay, I went out in the shop and I sharpened our dowel. We're going to go ahead and install it. Now this next part, unfortunately, i got to do off camera because of the room I need to do this. But I'll kind of explain to you what I'm going to do. I'm going to insert our dowel. We have our point here. Make sure our point is symmetrical when you sharpen it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the wing and i got the center marked. And I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to line that up on the center. And I'm going to hold it and I'm going to push to make an indentation on the wing. And then I'm going to drill that hole to a quarter of an inch. So this dowel will slide in. And we want to drill that, uh, see what was, what was it, about an inch or so, two inches deep. So this dowel will come in. We only want about that much of the dowel, excuse me, about that much of the dowel poking out past the wing to uh, lock in right here. And uh, what we'll do, we'll round that corner so it'll make it a little easier to line up when we, uh, when we go to install our wing on the airplane. Okay, this next part's going to be kind of tricky. We have our wing dowel installed in the leading edge of our wing. We have, it, we have our wing fitted to the fuselage. Now it's time to put the birchwood blocks, these little guys, into place. Now there's a key place for these things to fit in the doubler. They go right in. But the trick is, we got to put them in and put the wing on top of them and then kind of tack glue them in place and then we're going to put some triangle stock underneath those to strengthen them up. Um, I've got the fuselage and everything put together on my workbench but I'm really limited on space so let me try to find a good place to put the camera to show you what we're doing. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, laugh if you will but this is the best I can do. You're actually inside the airplane, okay? So kind of give you a heads up on what we're going to do. This area right in here, I know these are the former is kind of blocking the view, but hopefully you'll be able to see um, what I'll be doing because I need to get in here like so and do my work. Okay, so we're going to put our wing on, put our dowel in our hole, and we want to seat our wing just like that. Now, hopefully, using my handy dandy foam flight flight stand. There we go. Alright, now what I want to do is go ahead and get my birchwood blocks in place. Maybe. This is kind of an odd angle. Maybe we can Well, crap. Let me get that in place. I'm going to grab the other one. Just be patient and it'll work. Maybe. should somewhat stay okay now what I'm doing if, if you can see I'm making sure that they are in their place okay and are flat against the wing now what I want to do is take some glue is that one open bud yeah I got Ryan in here helping me all right well let's see here I want to use a finer tip because I don't want to run glue everywhere and accidentally glue the wing to the fuselage That'll be bad. Okay, I'm going to let go of this and hopefully it won't fall apart. Okay. 
so small. All right. I was out in the, sh the shop the other day, and I was fortunate enough to find an unopened bottle of glue. So. Let me get this open. And. Find my fine applicator tips wherever they went to. Oh, your applicator tips? Yeah, the little bitty. You know where those are at? Hi. See, it's good to have. Right here. Yeah, okay, now be careful bumping stuff because I got everything just kind of setting together, okay, buddy? Mm -hmm. Alright, what I'm doing, I'm putting uh, one of those fine applicator tips, you know. On my glue bottle here, kind of see it right there. Now with my hand, I'm gonna hold. Ah, oh, crap! What did you just do? I just lost one of the blocks. That's okay. We'll get this one. I'm down against the wing, and this former right here. I'm just gonna shoot a little bit of glue on that. Okay, just like that and give it a second to dry and now I'm going to pull all this apart to fish my block <laughs> I just lost out of there okay here's that I like to say we're working at a weird angle here for me man that thing went up there all the way underneath the fuel tank There we go. Get that bad boy. Oh, this, that looks kind of cool, don't it? It's like you're riding along in an airplane. Do Don't that. get air sick with me. Yeah, we're going to put the wing back on. Again. Carefully not to uh, bump that mounting block. Set it back on our foam flat stand. This is why we haven't covered a fuselage yet. Okay. Shit. Lost it again. Keep on moving. If it happens again, it might be worse than the S word. You might hear the F word. We don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. So goes there like that. Carefully. Okay. I got an idea. I got this really cool tape. It's sticky on both sides. Oh, double sided sticky tape? Yep. Where's it at, bud? Over, over there. Yep. In that first tray, second tray. There you go. Okay. Bear with me here a second, guys. I'm gonna remedy this situation. I got this Scotch tape that I use on my sanding blocks. I'll show you guys a little later on. It's like Scotch tape and it's sticky on both sides. I want to put this if I can find the end of it. block to just kind of stick it in there. Not permanently, that's why we're not going to glue it or anything. But, uh, get that bad boy to stick one way or another. You know, they make a really cool holder for this. I don't do that, okay? Not with the airline. So, bear with me here. Okay, I'm going to 
make sure I'm putting it on the right spot. Now, before all this is said and done, before we drill our holes to bolt everything together, we're actually going to epoxy all this. In my opinion, it can't be strong enough. Now, let's try this again. Take 47. <coughs> You always have that one thing that's going to be a pain in the butt. No matter what you do. Okay? So. is still there. All right, now see I'm pushing that down on the wing. Okay, and that's just so that we know everything lines up. A little bit of glue there. Careful not to get our wing. Okay, give that a second or two. I'm going to go ahead and pull all this apart. I'm going to stop the camera and get the camera out of the airplane because uh, now we can work on the fuselage part. I just wanted you to see, try to get the best point of uh, view to see what we did to make the blocks match up on our wing. Okay, here we are back in business. Now these are our blocks we just installed. We know they fit up against our wing, so let's go ahead and use a little bit of CA to kind of more make that a little bit more permanent. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave my applicator tip on. That way we can get that down in those cracks. Good to go. These, the thing about these applicator tips, that's what they look like. They're a one-time use thing, so I mean, you're done with it, might as well just pitch it. But if you're like me, you'll kind of set them off to the side. And if they're still usable after a day or so, you don't get that chance of glue to dry, still use it. The glue may not flow as well as it did at first, but still usable, still usable. All right, now we find our triangle stock, wherever that disappeared to. What triangle stock? The stick of wood that looked like a triangle. I know where it is. You know where it's at? Well, I'm glad I have you down here. Oh, here it is. I've just found it. Yep. Right there, buddy. Okay. Again, another precision marking. stick is too long so guess what we actually do have to measure a lot of things. so what I want to do I'm going to measure that triangle stock to go up against our former to the edge of that block should be about an inch and that's exactly what it is so we'll go ahead and cut two pieces at an inch and we'll mix up some epoxy and we'll get ready to epoxy all this stuff into place so uh, just save time we'll be back after I get everything ready to epoxy and load. all right here we are epoxy's mixed up our blocks are cut and uh, I did apply a little bit of heat to our mixture to kind of thin it out a little bit what I'm going to do first is get our blocks epoxied into place 
spread a little on them. And then get them bad boys in there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have it upside down to get the blocks in. <clears throat> but when I let it set, I'm gonna flip it over that way gravity is working for us. I'll probably have to push these back into place a time or two. Or maybe not, I don't know. Let's see. But uh, got them in there. I'm gonna brush some epoxy on them, go around our blocks. Now I'm not gonna get this part of the block. However, I am gonna put a drop of epoxy there. That way it'll run down that former kind of gluing that in place. Now I'll have to come back and sand that down. But uh, just like that, all over. Now we're gonna let gravity work for us. Flip our fuselage over. Set it on our stand. Oops. Like that. And that lightning hole that you saw me lightening hole back here. Let's see. What you saw me working through when I temporarily glued those blocks into place. I'm going to work through those same ones to apply some glue. i get that cord out of the way. Let's see, you can see that one that is right there, okay? This is where gravity works for us. I'm gonna get that other side first as I can see it. And I'm just gonna put epoxy all over that bad boy. Okay. Makes it a little stouter. Ooh. What? Just like that. Okay. All right, I know it sucks to see that. It's hard to see that, but uh, that's how we get them in place. And uh, I'm going to let this set, and when we come back, we'll continue on with the wing mounting. Well, folks, uh, we're kind of at a stopping point. Um, our next step is to actually drill out our wing bolts and tap them, and we need a quarter 20 tap. And what I thought was a quarter 20 is actually a 5 16 18 tap. Um, what that means is a 5 16 minor diameter with 18 threads per inch. Well, what we need is a quarter inch diameter with 20 threads per inch. So that's not going to work out real well in our favor. So I need to go to the hardware store and buy one. We'll probably pick up on this on the next episode. So uh, I'm going to end this episode right here. And um, we'll uh, go ahead and get into mounting or actually doing the elevator, rudder, horizontal, and vertical stabilizers. And um, getting ready to uh, cover our fuselage. And when uh, I get the tap we will go over mounting the wing. It doesn't necessarily have to be done right at this point. It doesn't stop the construction, but uh, we're just gonna have to skip a step to do so. You might wanna take this opportunity to uh, go ahead and start sanding down your fuselage. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show you kind of what we're gonna do when we mount the wing if you wanna move on. Let me swap this around here. Okay, we have our mounting bolts, blocks, right here. Now what we would want to do is measure and find the exact center of our block and we would mark it. And then what we would do, we would transfer our mark onto our fuselage right here. And then we would see how far down from here to our center line is and we'd set our wing on measure back, mark our center line on our wing, 
and put the basically put the marks and we'd set the wing on here and we'd take a quarter inch drill bit and drill all the way through both the wing and the block with the wing firmly in place and then when we would remove the wing tap our holes in our blocks put a little bit of CA thin CA to strengthen them up into the holes we're going to tap in we would repeat that process twice that gives our threads strength to uh, do their job and then we would come back and drill the uh, holes in our wing out we would drill them out the next size bigger that way allow clearance for our bolts just to slide into place and then we can put them in but meanwhile while we're making the next episode you can go ahead and start sanding you can sand all this down make it nice and smooth in our tabs like this you might want to take your Dremel tool because that is light ply and what I have that I use is actually a Dremel tool with a sanding drum on it and that makes quick work of that but uh, be careful not to dig into the side of the fuselage just want to sand them down smooth what you might think about doing is get them really close and then come back with a sanding block like like this one um, it's real rigid it's made out of aluminum and don't give and you can go back and just take it down to the level of the fuselage itself make everything nice and smooth because when we paint this it's going to be a high gloss finish finish and it'll show so if you're uh, also using a microfilm or anything like that to cover with them um, it'll show as well so try to get it as smooth as you can and also go back through all of your your formers and make sure they're glued excuse me glued really well um, so that'll end this episode and I think today's letter is gonna be uh, the letter N so uh, put that down on your list for a PT40 giveaway and uh, we'll be uh, back next week with another episode maybe we can finish this sucker all right, you guys have a good one. This episode, we'll be introducing our Foam Flight Tabletop Airplane Stands. These stands are available from 20 all the way up to 30cc size aircraft in two different convenient sizes. These stands feature metal hardware and plywood interlocking parts. This airplane stand is posable in any direction imaginable, so if there's an angle you need to hold your airplane, this stand will do it. You can find yours today at www.foam-flight.com That's www.foam-flight.com